With Fire Kings coming around the corner and Phantom Nightmare, they're going to be giving you some nightmares in your sleep. Let's talk about the top five cards, or rather, I guess, top five ideas that you can be using to beat down Fire Kings. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off that like and subscribe button as we go into the year of the fire with 1,363 subscribers. Soon we're going to be hitting that 1,400 ladder. I really do appreciate all the support. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Let's talk about the top five cards that we're going to be using to uh, beat some booty, some big old booty booty butt cheeks on the Fire Kings. Also, as I'm saying in all these videos, uh, I'm out of town right now, so I'm sorry about not any sort of fancy graphics. i got to pre-record a bunch of videos, so we're just throwing this on here, and if you're listening to this while taking a dump and you don't care about looking at no graphics, good for you, Sugar Boo Bear. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and dive on into it. So, at number five, I have, like, floodgates in general. Now, I'm sure you're going to be thinking, Avery, that's so generic. What are you talking about? If you are a deck that wants to play floodgates, whether it's, uh, depending on your build, Labyrinth, uh, Eldritch, Flunder, with, you know, Shifter and things. Uh, activating a Summon Limit on Fire King is actually kind of good because they have to summon several times in a turn to really get a board established. And so being able to just floodgate them out, like, just, it beats a lot of stuff too. Like, there's a reason why Rivalry and Goza went to one because it actually does kind of hurt Fire King a good bit. Not to mention the fact that those floodgates are just pretty overpowered. Um, but it's definitely something to be looking at whenever you're building your deck, whatever it is that you plan on playing. And if you have some non-engine slots in your deck that you have for flexibility, you may want to commit to playing some floodgates, like whether they're generic or what have you, just to be able to get the jump on decks like Fire Kings so that you just have an easier time at, at beating them. Because like if you're not opening up nibs, if you're not opening up ghost spells and all these things, you're going to have a very hard time. You know, you need those hand traps. You need something to be able to stop Fire King from popping off. Because if they pop off, they're not going to have any negates, but they're going to have so many interruptions between Promethean Fire Princess, using Flamberge to get out Mascarena, linking off into a Little Knight, or an Apollosa for an actual negate. Uh, summoning out Kieran, popping the Flamberge, summoning that out, getting out the Garunix, popping another monster. Like, just having a Kieran in your hand, whether you get it back off of the Sunlight Wolf or whatever, and popping the Flamberge Dragon triggers off so many things because not only do they get the Kirin, but now they can get the Garunix, which will pop, say, the Arvada to get them into the monster. The Flamberge would get some two level ones. They've probably already got the Mask Rain on the board ready to make something, whether it's an Apollosa or a Little Knight, and you can see where it snowballs out of control from there. So if you have any kind of floodgates, whether it's in your side or your main, is going to help you a lot. Now, the cards I'm primarily talking about I feel like could be main or sided for the most part. The, some of them you probably just want to side. And this is mostly like a side deck video. I mean, hence the title, side deck cards. But if you have room in your main deck for these cards, there is a chance that you may want to main deck them, right? Um, next up here at number four. No, these are in no particular order, by the way. Uh, we've got cards that are macro, you know, like macro in general, D shifter, what have you. You lock out the graveyard for Fire Kings, even Rescue Ace, I feel like to a lesser extent. They're gonna be dropping a dookie stain all over their all over their pants. I almost lost my voice there for a second. <laughs> That's how big the boo-boo stain gonna be. Because they literally can't play the game. Like it's hilarious. I have shiftered Fire Kings in testing, and the Fire King player just sits there and is like, I wish I could draw as good as you, and I'm like yeah, it feels good, Pimp, because they just can't play. If they don't open up the call by, it's like, what do you do? Even if they talent, it's like, what are you going to do? Draw two more cards that you can't use? Or are you going to rip a card out of my hand and you still can't play anyway? And you're not going to end on a little night because you don't want to banish your cards. So what are you going to do? So, yeah, it's it's absolutely phenomenal. And I don't expect Fire King decks to be playing cross out with a shifter just to stop shifter. That's a little bit too going hard in the paint for that. Next up, at number three, we've got board breakers like Kaiju's Lava Sphere Modes. Um, cards like that are actually kind of insane. Um, you know, you can Kaiju the Flame Burge Dragon, and then it doesn't get its effect to summon back uh, two level ones because it has to specifically be destroyed. Um, on top of that, because of the fact that the Fire King can't, the Fire King deck can't end on multiple monsters, whether it's through the Flame Burge being popped or whatever the case may be. Um, 
I'm sorry, I misspoke there. Editing me uh, had to fix this. If the Flamberge Dragon is sent from a hand or a field to grave, it brings out the two level ones. However, it's still good to kaiju the Flamberge because of the fact that even if they get out the two level ones, the Masquerain is sitting in the back row. Because remember, it's, it says during the opponent's main phase. So the opponent is still going to have the first action. So therefore, if your first action is either spear moding the Fire King board or kaijuing the Flamberge, yeah, they're going to get two level ones. Who gives a shit? They're not going to be doing anything unless they have a Kirin in hand that can pop a fire and then go for a Garunix. But you're going to know if they have the Kirin, most likely, especially if they get it with Sunlight Wolf. If they don't show it to you, you can just assume that they have the Kirin if they don't use one on your turn or whatever the case may be. Um, but cards like Sphere Mode and all that, getting rid of their fires, is very, very good. Remember that Sanctuary says that they have to exceed using Fire King monsters on their field. So if they don't have any Fire King monsters on their field and they don't have any Fire monsters on their field that they can pop a cure and they're going to have to pop out of the hand, assuming that they have a Fire monster in their hand to use. So cards like Lava, uh, especially more like Sphere Mode and Kaijus because you don't want to give them a fire with Lava, are going to be very, very good at cracking boards. Obviously, it depends on how the Fire King board ends. You know, if they just end on, say, like Heat Soul and Flamberge, then you can't Spear Mode them, but then yet you can at least Kaiju the Flamberge, deny them getting back the Masquerina. So you have those options available to you. Uh, next up here, I have Ghost Bell. Ghost Bell, I feel like, is actually going to take off possibly more than Soul Release, which, spoiler alert, yeah, at number one, I have Soul Release. Number two is Ghost Bell. Um, but between Ghost Bell and Soul Release, it's going to be interesting to see what pops off, because especially in the side deck, right? Because I feel like if you have space for hand traps in your main deck, I feel like you're going to want to go with, with Ghost Bell, because I feel like the combination of like Ghost Bell, Ash, and Permadrol, if you have the space for 12 hand traps, is going to be very, very good. I really don't know how good Valor is going to be moving forward, and I really don't know how well Nibiru is going to pop off. Maybe it'll be more of a side deck than a main deck choice, but... It just depends on how the format plays out because Fire King can still play through Nibiru possibly, but it depends on the combo line that Fire King decides to go down because if the player is not expecting uh, Nibiru, if they're not trying to play for it, then they're just going to play into it and go from there or they're going to try and play around it if they're expecting it. It's like a 4D chess type of thing, right? And so with Soul Release, you know, if the Fire King player is playing Barong or they're definitely going to be playing Ponix, if it's destroyed, then in the standby phase, there's a mandatory effect that has to activate. Therefore, your thrust is going to be live. You can play thrust, get soul release. The soul release says on a non-once per turn, because it's an old-ass card, target five cards between either player's graveyard, banish those. So you could target like two in your grave or three in the opponent's grave or just target five in their grave. Banish it all. You can banish the Promethean Princess, the two level one fires. You can banish the Wanted Seeker Simple Spoil, the original Simple Spoil Snake Eyes spell. You can banish all that and then you don't even have to worry about it. And that's less interruptions for the opponent to use. Or if they've got the Obama Whale or whatever it's called in their grave, you can banish that Boo Boo Stain of a card too. So guys, these are like my top five picks. I feel like that these mostly could be side deck relegated, possibly main deck depending on your build. Might be very interested to know what it is that you have to say. Sorry about the Flamberge Dragon mistake. I'm going to have to be sure I edit that out. But guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.